You know, this is definitely one thing I do have a problem with being a video maker and video editor myself. Having to wait so long to upload some of these videos. Oh sure, it takes some videos take like five minutes, but most of my let's plays take up to an hour to upload, which makes no sense. <sighs> the price you pay when you go for 1080p, right guys? So since my video is uploading at the moment, and since I've got nothing better to do, well, you already read the title, so why should I continue rambling? Hello, everyone. I'm Keen 47 aka Wolf Keen, and welcome to another My Little Pony vlog. Today, I am talking about Call of the Cutie, written by Megan McCarthy. This episode is a little different in many cases because this is the first time we get a different perspective in uh, in My Little Pony. Now, if you've watched every episode of My Little Pony, and maybe some of you have, you would know that we go through different perspectives in My Little Pony. We have the main six who we go through. We have Spike, who's another character in the story. And the third unofficial character, and the third, more or less the unofficial eighth character, if you want to be technical, is known as the Cutie Mark Crusaders. So, um, we usually go flip-flop between these three stories, and this ends up, you know getting our attention in many cases. This is the first episode of the CMCs, as they're known as. Basically what's happening is that in Call of the Cutie, we actually find out some information about what are cutie marks. Because a lot of people wondered what the hell was a cutie mark in uh, My Little Pony and stuff like that. So we found out what it is. Apparently a cutie mark represents um, that pony's special talent. And a cutie mark will only appear when the pony finds out what their what's their special talent. So you know everybody has their own special talent in some cases like that. Hell, even the OCs have cutie marks that represent them. They're never straightforward. Not all the cutie marks are as straightforward as you would think. Like uh, their teacher, Cheer Lee, her cutie mark is smiling flowers. Now there are plenty of interpretations you can make there, but her interpretation of it, which represents her talent is that she wanted to see her children, you know, her students bloom and smile from her teachings. So, that's a weird representation for such a weird cutie mark, but then again, that's the kind of idea that uh, cutie marks are. But what's basically happening is that um, Apple Bloom is possibly the last um, filly without a cutie mark. Apple Bloom is, of course, Applejack's sister. Um, Apple Bloom is basically the only one in her class, I think, without a cutie mark besides her friend Twist. Um, the less I say about Twist, the better, because a lot of people do not like her. A lot of people do not like Twist because of the way she talks. It doesn't annoy me because I used to watch shows with characters like that all the time, so... Twist doesn't bother me as much as other people. And plus, it's really hard to grate me, like, you know, in certain cases. Like, hell, not even Navi in freaking Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time annoys me. And that's saying a lot. But back on subject. They try to basically twist and Apple Bloom are heading home together and then they get basically taunted by these two other fillies in their class. Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon are almost like your stereotypical, um, you know, bullies in school. And they're basically talking about, um, you know... Their cutie marks, how special their cutie marks are, basically rubbing it in their face because they don't have one. And hell, even doing this stupid little handshake slash dance that they have. You know how like some of these bullies have like a weird handshake dance that they love to do just to insult them? And then of course when they leave, they just give them an insult which is blank flanks. That's basically kind of like an insult to, uh, you know, the, them. I mean... You know, you know how like there are different insults like "oh, shut up, four eyes" and other stuff like that. Well, that's pretty much the idea. So Apple Bloom becomes obsessed with the idea of trying to get her cutie mark to the point where she's trying to talk to Applejack, trying to figure out like how to get her cutie mark. It does hit her at one point that all of her family has apple-related uh, cutie marks, so she thought maybe my talent is apples. So she tries way too hard to make this cutie mark appear. And she just ends up doing more harm than good in many situations. So Applejack then has the idea, because I forgot to mention this, um, Diamond Sierra is basically having this uh, party called the Cute Senera, if I said it correctly. And um, basically just to talk about how great her cutie mark is. Yeah, very uh, inflated in the head she is. But then again, that's what a lot of bullies are. 
So Applejack comes up with the idea, like, would she feel better if she goes with her friend Twist, since she doesn't have a cutie mark either, and she said, yeah, I'd be fine with that. And so Apple Bloom goes to see Twist, and um, shockingly, Twist got her cutie mark. Apparently, Twist's cutie mark is making uh, the cinnamon snacks and stuff like that. Because her cutie mark is basically, you know, those, uh, you know, those candy canes and stuff like that. She apparently makes them like cinnamon and stuff like that. But that's what I'm trying to say. So um, now that Twist has her cutie mark, Apple Bloom is practically the only pony in her class without it, and pretty much this um, depresses her, especially after Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon hammer it home on her. So now she's just so depressed and she ends up trying to get help from different ponies. She gets help from Rainbow Dash and Rainbow Dash has the idea of doing multiple things at once to, uh, you know, help her get a cutie mark. Which unfortunately I wish Rainbow Dash didn't do this to her. Because because of Rainbow Dash telling Apple Bloom the best way to get a cutie mark is to just do a bunch of random things at one time until something appears. That's the norm that happens with the Cutie Mark Crusaders. They just keep doing that norm throughout many of the episodes, which a lot of people can agree with me. So I really have to fault Rainbow Dash on this one because it's because of Rainbow Dash that we got this idea that we've gotten this problem with the Cutie Mark Crusaders in later episodes. So after Apple Bloom tries, you know, doing all this with Rainbow Dash, she transitions to go to Pinkie Pie and decides to make cupcakes with Pinkie Pie. Don't make a joke. And unfortunately, she doesn't do very good with the cupcakes either. And then she gets really desperate. Um, she actually talks to Twilight into making her use her magic to make her cutie mark appear. I can understand. I mean, she's a kid. She's a kid. This is honest. It's like, you know, you know how like you have a pimple as a kid or something like that. And you don't want people to see it or you lost your tooth or something like that. You want to do whatever it takes to get it back or something like that or to hide it. Yeah, that's kind of, you know. I can relate that situation. Best way I can relate is the fact that one day during picture day, I lost three teeth in a row. Yeah, three of my teeth were loose, and I lost them all on the same day. And I had to take a picture with like, like these teeth gone, like this one, this one, and this one. I, it looked like someone, like shot me in the mouth. I tried to do whatever I could to avoid it, and unfortunately, I could not. I actually still have that picture if I could find it. You know what? If I ever find that picture, I'll show you it just to prove my point. But, um, after that fails, she just decides not to go to the cute senior, only to realize that the cute senior is being held at Sugar Cube Corner, and she's at Sugar Cube Corner. So now she's trying to find any way possible to get out of there before uh, she gets seen, especially by Diamond Tiara or Silver Spoon. And she does get close at one point. She does get close at one point, so Applejack forces her back in, and, um, well, of course, Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon come after her, and she pretty much covers herself. Like, she covers her flank and says, oh, yeah, I have a cutie mark, but I don't want to show it because I don't want to outshine you. And this worked because, you know, Diamond Tiara being the intention whore that she is... So of course she tries to just continue with her day and unfortunately she steps on the thing she made. Yeah, she took like a cloth and tied it around her flank. Unfortunately she stepped on it, caused it to come off her, smashed right into the freaking record player and then uh, exposed. Just exposed. And pretty much uh, Diamond Terra and Silver Spoon begin insulting her in front of everybody. This is where I do have a problem here. I can understand um, insulting her like within the classroom um, setting or something like that, but you're insulting her in the middle of public. There's a bunch of adult ponies there. You would think someone would castrate her. But of course, someone does come to Apple Bloom's defense. Two other fillies who also don't have their acuity marks, Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo. And actually, they come up with a really good reasoning. They actually start defending Apple Bloom, saying that just because she doesn't have a cutie mark, doesn't, that doesn't mean she's not special. That means she has potential to be something. She could be anything at this point. And a lot of people agreed with that because when you have your cutie mark, that's your talent. I mean, that's what you are. So not having a cutie mark means that she has a lot of potential to be something else. And I found this to be very good. 
And like I said, um, and then Twilight says that yeah, they're very lucky Phillies because they still have they still get the chance to discover what makes them special. And I honestly agree that is a good thing because once you find out what makes you special, the hype dies down after time. I mean, look at me. I'm a great video. I'm a great. Um, I'm a great gamer, and I love video editing. I feel like that's what makes me special. The hype has died. Yes, I mean my hype for that has died. Yes, but I still enjoy it. Like that's the point. So of course, Diamond Tear and Silver Spoon get freaking uh, outshowed by by these three fillies, and um, they actually decide to be friends, and they decide to make this new uh, club. They decide to make a club to help them find their cutie marks, which, as I explained, was called the Cutie Mark Crusaders. And um, that's pretty much where the episode ends from there. Call the Cuties not it called the Cuties definitely a cool episode in many cases, and I do like the concept of it. And especially since this was the introduction of the Cutie Mark Crusaders, this definitely worked in many cases. My only problem with it is that Twilight was shoehorned into the episode. But then again, she was shoehorned in every episode in season one because she was the only one writing letters to Celestia. This didn't change until season two where they didn't need Twilight anymore in every episode because everyone was writing letters to Celestia. So honestly, this wasn't a this is a good episode in many cases. Not the best CMC episode at mind you, but it's definitely a good one to be uh, thinking about. Because um it definitely does it def it is a bit thought provoking. It is a bit thought provoking if you really think about it that way. It's a very thought provoking episode and I definitely love how we got the you know, how these three Phillies become friends because of a single goal. I mean I've never had that kind of situation happen to me, but it's kind of cool that, uh, you know, because of one single goal, these three are now friends, and I'm glad for that because they have great chemistry together. Like, they play off of each other very well, they're good friends to each other, and, you know, they definitely have great personalities behind them. I cannot wait to see some of the next Cute and Crusader episodes. But guess what, guys? The episode that made me a brony is up next. Take some consideration with that one. So, guys, until next time, I'm KNF47, aka Wolfkeen, and this has been a My Little Pony Vlog. And now I gotta wait for this video to upload again. Till next time. Bye.